Thank you very much for joining me on this Thursday. I'm meteorologist Brian Shields. Thank you for your trust as we navigate this hurricane season, and thank you for sharing this channel. I've been seeing that, especially in the uh, comments as well. I do appreciate that. All right, let's get right to it. Here is Lee. Lee itself is going to rapidly intensify today. It's going to be a major hurricane by tonight. Winds are going to be uh, Category 3 strength or higher, so we're talking winds 115 uh, to 120 as soon as tomorrow morning. And then, yes, this could become a Category 5 hurricane, but the hope is it stays over water. I want to get to the new alert zone for this, where it's going to go long term. I'll get to the computer models. All of that in this video uh, got you covered. All right, let me start here short term again. What I'm seeing with this, this is as we work our way into our Friday. So this is by the time we get into tomorrow night. So starting again where it's closest to, here's the Northeastern Caribbean, Barbados, back through Puerto Rico, Montserrat. And again, on this distance, and I'll show you the distance, how far away this system is or how close it is, depending on how you look at it. Again, and on this heading, right on track from what we have been talking about for what feels like a week now, where this would take uh, more of that north, northerly trek, staying to the north of us in the northeastern Caribbean. That keeps the hurricane conditions and the tropical storm conditions away. Now, it's going to be slow, so of course, there are going to be really high seas, dangerous seas, dangerous waters, but there's the core of this system. Now, by Monday, when it's to the north, and to the north by a good measure, you get these feeder bands. Those are rain bands that stretch far away from the system and kind of wrap into it. In those rain bands, even down through Barbados, wouldn't be surprised to see one even over toward Trinidad. In those rain bands, you could get some gusty winds and you could get some kind of tropical storm force uh, winds. So we're talking winds of 50 kilometers an hour, 35 miles per hour plus. So again, yes, there will be a few rain bands in this and I'll just be monitoring those. But again, this is going to stay uh, to the north on the current heading. Now, what happened overnight was a shift. There was one yesterday, it took a little jog to the north. Then overnight, it took another jog to the north. That is good news for the Northeastern Caribbean. Again, it is on track or even a slightly better track. Now, with that said, we're still watching this very carefully. Parts of the Southern Bahamas, Turks and Caicos, right back through, say, Anguilla. So that includes the British Virgin Islands, U.S. Virgin Islands, uh, watching this uh, just to make sure there's no uh, kind of crazy changes with this. I haven't been seeing that. If anything, again, those subtle northerly shifts, that's been helpful. Of course, Bermuda down the road, we need to be on a higher alert. At some point, this is going to make a curve up to the north. When it makes that curve, obviously, is critical on what happens down the line, potentially for the United States, Canada, and in the shorter term, Bermuda. Bermuda, if this comes close by, that would be Thursday of next week, that it could be very close, and I'll get into that. Now, showing you the distance, again, as this passes by, very powerful hurricane this weekend uh, to the north and northeast of the Caribbean. This will be, again, the European and the American model are pretty much locked in. They're almost the same this morning. 325 miles away or 525 kilometers away. That is a safe distance away. Again, seas aside, uh, the seas are going to be rocking, of course, and some of those feeder bands will be filtering in, but that is a safe distance away. Now, for the Turks and Caicos, how close will it be? Southern Bahamas, how close? As it stands now, again, the European and the American model are pretty much the same. So with that, this would be a little closer, 250 miles away or 400 kilometers away. It's going to kind of stall here as we get into early next week. So I'm going to see any of these uh, shifts, if it shifts a little bit closer to the Turks and Caicos or Bahamas, I'll be monitoring that. Again, I always have Dorian, I always have all the bad storms in my mind, which is terrible. Uh, thinking of the Irmas that have changed, uh, Dorians that have stalled out. Please know that I'm watching for any changes. This will be staying just off to the east on the current heading now. If things shift, I'll let you know right away. Bigger picture, here's what's going on. By the way, these are the remnants of Franklin up toward Portugal, not super organized, but again, a spin up there. Very gusty winds and extreme western portions of Europe. This here, that blob may catch your attention. That will become a named system. 
Early call on that will stay out, but there's a blob that will be back behind it in Central Africa right now. That may be another long track system. We'll put that on the back burner. I'll talk about that in a second. But here again, watching this, that right there is what we're dealing with Lee and that old spin right there, what's left of Adalia, and that has been helpful so far in the path. Latest track making this a major hurricane. The National Hurricane Center with the two shifts north that I mentioned have shifted the track a little bit more to the north. Uh, which is overall good news, but watching for any more of a shift back down to the south, we'll monitor that, but look how close these models are. This is rare even long term to see them this close and staying this consistent, which is a good thing, especially because as of now, it's over water. Long term, obviously, there's a bigger model spread. This is the American model, and in the American model, like other models, there's different variations of the runs, and they, they look at different things. They're computers, and you can see here again, there will be that shift to the uh, north at some point when it takes that turn still to be determined. So I can't really break down impacts in other areas. If anyone's breaking down impacts in the United States or elsewhere, that's just kind of uh, almost uh, just uh, conjecture at this point. I, we don't know where it's going to go long term, so I don't know the impacts of what will happen. Now, here's what's going on. I mentioned that blob there that will develop later today into a named system. This here is Lee. Those are the remnants of Adalia, and that has kept this area of high pressure, as we've been talking about for a long time, off to the east, and that's good because that is allowing it to make a curve. If this big blue H were right here, this would have shot straight into the Caribbean. That would have been a disaster, but because this spin was here, it kept this blocker over here, and it is allowing a little window for this to turn. That's why there's been that little bump, a little shift to the north. Again, too close for comfort, but we are watching it right now. If it stays on track, we're in good shape. This is by the time we get into the weekend on Saturday. There's its closest approach again, over 300 miles away. High pressure temporarily builds in because high pressure builds in. That's a blocker. That's one of the reasons it's going to slow. You can see how it just stalls out. As we work our way into early next week, Monday and Tuesday, such a slow mover there. That is going to rock those seas, erosion everywhere. Uh, we're going to be seeing those rip currents. Here it is, a super powerful system, Category 4, Category 5 hurricane. Winds could top 160, gusts could be 200 in it over water, then there's one front here, so that pushes high pressure away. This front will start to move in, but this one starts to weaken. It's going to be the one behind it that is going to grab it and then lift it up to the north. But I'm still working out the timing on that. This thing is way back here. You see this is by Thursday morning of next week. Powerful hurricane, here's Bermuda. Here is that front that I'll be watching, and this is the front that will eventually grab it and lift it to the north, but I need to wait and see how strong this front is, the timing of this. When it turns will be key. If it turns later, that could mean some impacts over toward Cape Cod. If it turns earlier, that could draw it right into Bermuda or again up into uh, the eastern Canada area. So this would be by the time we get into next weekend, somewhere Atlantic region close to New England, the potential of some hurricane conditions over a week from now. It is a wait and see, but I did want to show it to you. And then watching this area of high pressure, I mentioned this, I think it was in yesterday's video or the video before, a little area of high pressure may build back in. That would not be good because then that, again, this is a blocker, that doesn't allow it to escape. So that would mean it would move over land, watching Newfoundland over toward Nova Scotia, back through New England, uh, uh, keeping a very close eye on that for next weekend. So about a week and a half from now. Here's how it is on the bigger picture with the American model. It is scary how close it is to the European model. Both are doing a very good job so far with this system. They've been really latching on to the strength of the system. So I watched what the models were showing and then what the system actually does. And that tells me that things are really behaving out there. And this is by the time we get into Saturday. There's your time frame ticking along as we work our way into Sunday and Monday, Monday into Tuesday, that's when it really stalls out, which is always a concern. And that's one of the things I'll be watching. When is this front going to actually grab it and lift it up to the north? The stall would be just to the north of Puerto Rico by a decent measure, but those higher seas and to the east of the Turks and Caicos. Any shift closer to the Turks and Caicos, I'll adjust the forecast and show you what I'm seeing. And then the American model has this lift closer to Bermuda. There is a chance that this splits the United States and Bermuda, which would be awesome, keeping it over water, but interest from the Carolinas, 
Bermuda, right up through New England, Atlantic region of Canada, paying very close attention to this. American model, like the European model, does eventually bring impacts late next week, next weekend to Eastern Canada and close to New England. We need to see how strong this area of high pressure is over here. If it's super strong, that could bring this right into New England, like a, a Gloria, which was back in 85 in Hurricane Bob, which was the uh, early 1990s, 90 or 91. Let me know in the comments. I got to go back and check on that. Uh, so that could be a scenario. Or if this area of high pressure is a little bit weaker, this could bring it closer to Eastern Canada, which has been dealing with a lot of systems that have been moving by the last couple years. Watching the winds. Now, what's going to happen? I want to show you the wind field on this. What happens when it stalls out? It changes the structure of this system. These are the core winds. You see the reds in here. Those would be winds of 110 kilometers an hour or 70 miles per hour. I've got both on there and you'll see a lot of greens popping up, yellows and greens. Greens becoming a major hurricane. Uh, winds of 125 miles per hour. And as I mentioned, winds are going to be around 150 to 160, gust as high as 200 in this. And you see the winds here okay the next few days in the northeastern Caribbean. Core of the winds staying up to the north, which is absolutely huge. Can't stress that enough. As you well know, we don't need this thing in anyone's uh, uh, backyard. You see these uh, purple showing up. That is a major category four, category five hurricane. When it gets to the north and starts to stall, what happens is the wind field, when it sits there, starts to expand. The structure of this changes. We saw this back in 2017 with Irma. It went from a little more of a compact system to a very large system. You could see it really becoming expansive. And I mentioned that the worst of the winds obviously staying to the north of Puerto Rico, for example, but there will be some gustier winds and watching those feeder bands like I talked about. Don't want to diminish that. Get some gustier winds when it lifts to the north and look at it there. Look how giant this wind field is. So with that in Bermuda, even if this stays uh, off to the uh, east, or rather west rather, as I get my direction right, uh, the east side's usually worse because you counter in that forward motion in the wind direction. That just adds on to things. Plus, even if the core stays off to the west, the wind field is going to be so much bigger. Look at that. When it was over here, it was more like this. But because of the stall and getting caught into a front, the wind field will expand. And that's why even if this lifts uh, towards, say, Nova Scotia, there could be some strong winds in parts of New England once we get into next weekend. All the models in good agreement. Don't want to dive into this too much. Basically, in this purple shading, showing a Category 4 hurricane, it could easily be a Category 5 uh, hurricane. So we have Lee. That's the one. The one behind it should be Margo. All indications are that stays out to sea. And if you're catching, watching my uh, map a second ago when I was showing you the American model, it looks like down the road there'll be another system similar to Lee and that will be kind of a long track system across the Atlantic. I hope it finds a window to escape. Way too early to tell. It's actually a blob in Central Africa right now. That's where a lot of the rain and storms come this time of year because of the trade winds, the global winds, how they circulate in the Atlantic and it draws off those rain and storms and then they get over the warm waters of the Atlantic and this time of year they form. Later in the season, we actually see things that will form closer to home, Gulf of Mexico and in the Caribbean with old fronts as the wind pattern changes. Closer to home, again, watching some of the showers and storms here, parts of Central America. There is Lee, of course. Now look at this. This is Hova. This is a category five hurricane out there, right where we like it in the water, not coming to Mexico. And eventually it will start to cool down or get into cooler water and start to weaken. Uh, that's some good news. I don't see any prospects that this is an impact for Hawaii, but a super powerful system out there in the Eastern Pacific. They have a different set of names. Eastern Pacific has a different set of names versus the Atlantic. That's why sometimes you see some uh, different names around. All right, here's a closer look. Scattered showers and storms around today. I'll get into the forecast. And this this is by the time we get into tomorrow. Spotty showers, Cuba, uh, Bahamas, Haiti could see an isolated storm. There is Lee trying to tra take that uh, trek off to the east and the northeast. And again, once it gets to the north by late weekend and next week, that's when we'll see some of more of the uh, feeder bands and even some of the gustier winds, especially northern and northeastern Caribbean. Spotty showers and storms, a little bit more numerous on Saturday in Panama. 
Of note, I do just want to mention and uh, clarify, this is not going to shoot, Lee itself is not going to shoot into the Caribbean. It is not going to go into the Gulf of Mexico and for Florida and the Bahamas as of now, looks to stay to the east monitoring any of those uh, changes. Puerto Rico, scattered showers and storms. Better chance this weekend as it lifts to the north, we're going to see some moisture wrapping around. So we'll watch out for some scattered showers and storms in the U.S. Virgin Islands and the British Virgin Islands. Antigua and Barbuda, rain chance this weekend up to about 50%. Again, life-threatening rip currents, life-threatening seas as a whole. They are going to be rocking around because this system is going to be so big. Rain chance 50% in, in, in Anguilla as we work our way into the weekend. Could be as high as 60% Sunday and Monday with some of those feeder bands nearby. St. Kitts and Nevis and Montserrat, 40% chance on Saturday. Rain chance ticking up St. Martin, Saba, and Stacia getting in that overall flow of Lee. Lee, the heaviest weather's offshore, uh, but it really creates, uh, really takes over the overall environment. Even down toward Trinidad and Tobago, it'll be drier, the action's up to the north. Occasionally, there may be a shower too that feeds all the way from down there, all the way up into Lee. Grenada, rain chance 20 to 30%. 30 to 40% chance in Barbados today through the upcoming weekend. 40% chance this weekend in St. Lucia. St. Vincent and the Grenadines, isolated showers and storms the next three days. Jamaica, 30 to 40% chance, isolated to scattered, mainly afternoon shower storm. Belize, a 30 to 40% chance, same thing in the Yucatan and Mexico, pop-up showers and storms possible. Isolated, 30% chance for us in the Cayman Islands, 20, 30, 40% chance in the next three days across the Bahamas. You know I'm watching the Bahamas and the Turks and Caicos uh, as this thing stalls just to see how close it wobbles uh, to the Turks and Caicos and the Bahamas. Haiti isolated shower storm, Dominican Republic a 40% chance today, tomorrow, and Saturday. Mainly dry Aruba, Curacao, and Bonaire. Not much in the way of rain whatsoever. 50% chance in Guadeloupe with some of those rain bands, very outer rain bands possible on Saturday. 40% chance in Dominica on Saturday. 40% chance in Martinique on Saturday. And you see the rain chance elevated in Costa Rica, 50 to 60% chance. Same thing in Panama, northern Venezuela, 30 to 40% chance. Not a lot in Guyana and Suriname, very limited, uh, 10, 20% chance of a passing shower or storm. So all eyes on Lee watching for that track of it. It'll move to the north of the northeastern Caribbean, keeping a very close eye on the Turks and Caicos, southern Bahamas. In that alert zone, we're all watching this. Uh, in Bermuda, obviously a higher alert, waiting to see when it takes the turn. And as I mentioned, uh, that wind field is going to expand. So where the winds are now just uh, kind of out from the center, they'll be much more out from the center down the road. And that is important to the forecast as we get down the road, watching those rain bands in the Caribbean and of course those very dangerous seas. And I'll be waiting on that bigger turn up to the north to see long-term what will happen. Hurricane season goes through the end of November. So plenty to cover and yeah, more systems back behind it. That is common this time of year. Let's hope this thing stays over water. Thank you again for sharing this channel. I hope you have a good rest of your day.